Can I be quite honest with you? There are times when I am just flat out tired of the battle. Can you relate? This is lesson seven, the fight of faith. In the story of Gideon this week, we're going to read about how the Lord greeted Gideon, not as Gideon saw himself, the least of the least, but as a mighty warrior. God saw what Gideon was going to become. I believe our God sees what we will become. In fact, he sees us with eyes even the present in ways that we don't see ourselves. He sees us as more than conquerors. Our God wants us to walk in his truth. His truth is the big T truth. It is what trumps all the little T truths in our lives. The failures that have come before, the things that we have done that seem to tell us that we are less than, no. Those are the kinds of thoughts we're going to take captive. We're going to reject them. We have divine power to demolish strongholds. We want to believe God's truth. And God's truth is so sweet. His truth is that he leads us in a triumphant procession in Christ. And through us spreads everywhere that fragrance of the knowledge of God. He calls us more than conquerors. He says he's got a full armor for us to wear. We want to put on the full armor of God. We want to stand firm against the devil's schemes. This is a battle, but it's not a battle of the bulge. We are hard pressed on every side, but not crushed. Perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not abandoned. Struck down, but not destroyed. If we think that this is merely a battle of the bulge, we are going to waffle all over the place on how important it is to keep fighting. Because, you know, on any given day, we care more than we do on other given days about our size. Sometimes we care a whole lot, like when we're rifling through our closets for something that fits just right for a certain event and can't find anything that we're happy with. Other times, like when we're going to do the gardening or we're going to go have a play day at the park, we might not care at all. And so this battle of the bulge is something that isn't really worth fighting for. But now if we think about it in terms of being a spiritual battle, that there is spiritual warfare going on, if you think about the fact that all around us are principalities and powers and spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms, then they have a will for your life. We don't want to give in to their schemes. We don't need to. We're more than conquerors. We've been given power in Christ. We've been given divine weapons that can demolish strongholds. Here's an example of a lie that I might speak to my own soul if I'm not careful. I have failed every time. I am destined to be heavy all my life. I will never get this lit. No. So we take captive all of our runaway thoughts and we submit them to obedience to Christ. As soon as I recognize that I have that thought, I say, oh Lord, please forgive me for reciting that lie into my own soul. I do not want to preach to my soul lies. I reject the lie that I am stuck. And instead, Lord, I know that the truth is you are doing a new thing. You have asked me if I can't perceive it to behold, you're making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. That is what is true. So a battle that I had today, real life battle that I had today, I was working on my computer, trying to do some things there. And I had lunch when I was hungry and I had pizza. I burned my mouth on that pizza. You know how cheese can stick to the roof of your mouth when it's hot? That's what I did. Well, ever since I did that at about, oh, I don't know what time it was, 11.30 or 12.30, something like that, my mouth has had this nasty flavor in it. And historically, if I have a lousy taste in my mouth, I have done something about it, like gotten something that's tasty to put in there. Yep, that's me. Okay, so today I kept thinking about that for the rest of the afternoon. I need something tasty to mask the flavor that's in my mouth. I had to speak truth to myself about that. I had to choose to speak truth. And the truth was, yes, I know that putting something yummy in my mouth will mask the yucky flavor that's in there because of burning the skin in my mouth, but it will only do it for as long as I keep putting food in my mouth. Do I, I had to count the cost. That sound familiar? 
If I'm going to do that, I'm going to be blowing through my boundaries all for the taste of something other than that yucky flavor in my mouth, which is going to be there as soon as the yummy flavor subsides. Is that something I really want to do? So speaking truth in a practical way to my own heart is really important in moments like that. Another truth I would tell myself is I will live if my mouth has a yucky taste in it. I will live. I really will. I don't need to worry about that. I can press on. Every day at about five o'clock, as well as first thing in the morning, I will take time to journal a set of questions. I take some time with my truth cards and with the Lord. And okay, this is one of the, this is the one I open to. And I say it out loud so I can say it, hear it, see it. Getting my eyes off of me and ministering to others is hugely encouraging. If I am going to make it through my day, that is a truth that I want to be telling myself. I want to be reaching out to others. It's hugely encouraging. Getting my eyes off of me, I have found that to be a wonderful thing to do. If you are working outside of the home, take this stuff with you and use it. The fight of faith requires weapons of warfare. Sometimes we have practical in our hands tools that we can use for that. And sometimes we'll have to call it up into our minds because we don't have access to something like that. Regardless, it's the fight of faith is going to take some effort. We're spending a lot less time on preparing food and counting calories or whatever that we used to do in our dieting days. We have time for this. We have time for this. We're eating a lot less food, so we have even, really, 10 minutes a day? 10 minutes. Are you doing anything relative to food 10 minutes less time than you did before you started? Could you spend those 10 minutes investing in putting truth into your mind, into your heart, so that it's ready to call up in a moment's notice when you are facing temptation? That's the fight of faith. Really, this is where the battle comes in. We have to, with an act of our will, get up, throw extra food away or down the garbage disposal or back in the dish for leftovers, whatever we need to do. It has to be with an act of our will. Sometimes we've just got to say no to our flesh. It takes a lot of work, yeah, but it's worth it. It's worth it. If you were to look back over the last seven weeks and look at where you started, I bet that you can see some progress that you've made. You have made headway against the enemy. And oh, you bet, he's spitting mad. You think he's going to settle for this? If you're experiencing the heat intensifying, well, then you're doing something right because the heat will intensify. He doesn't like, the enemy does not like that you are making headway. He knows that you are a victor. He knows that you are more than a conqueror. So he's going to do everything he can to trip you up. In fact, if the enemy can get you focusing on your size, focusing on the way you look, then he can keep you from reaching out to others. He can keep you from growing in your faith in a way that will exalt God more effectively. All kinds of things that can be hindered or minimized if we keep focusing on a battle of the bulge, this is a spiritual war. And we want, as those who are in a spiritual war, we want to be equipped, we want to be prepared, and we want to be ready to do the battle. And if we allow our God to call us up, to strengthen us, to infuse us with his power, and fight the fight of faith, I think we're going to begin to see some of the transformation that we long for. Come up here and say hello to everybody. Come on, up. Yes, this is Daisy. Say hello, Daisy. She said, look, right there, right there. See? Oh, there, Daisy. Oh, she says, where's the food? She's usually at the dining table. Oh, she's my Daisy girl. Yes, okay, that's all. Now you can get down and stop being annoying. All right.